Hey, what's up guys? Today, I'll show you a horror fantasy film, Wishmaster Part 1. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins with a glimpse into the past. A sorcerer mixed a powder and created an elixir. He then took the mixture and heated it in the burning fire. Eventually, he used the mixture to crack open an ore with a glittering fire opal inside. A voiceover by a narrator explains that since the beginning of time, powerful creatures called the Jinn have been dwelling in the void between the worlds. A jinn has the power to grant three wishes to anyone who wakes it. But after granting the third wish, the veil between the worlds will open, and the jinn will be able to unleash their forces onto the earth. There have been instances throughout history where humans wake the jinn and ask them to grant their wishes. One such instance was in Persia in 1127 AD. The Persian emperor himself woke a jinn, and for his second wish, he asked him to show him wonders. Because his wish was vague, the jinn interpreted it in the way that he wanted. To show him some wonders, the jinn then wreaked havoc in the palace and started killing people. Some of them sprouted unnatural limbs and monsters in their body, while others were completely transformed. It was chaos everywhere, and the people ran for their lives in despair. Inside his private chamber, the emperor regretted his wish, and the jinn gleefully told him that he could use his third wish to reverse the curse on his people. Of course, the emperor did not know the rule that asking the third wish would allow all the jinn to roam the earth and terrorize mankind. The emperor was about to do as the jinn suggested, but the sorcerer interrupted him in time. He informed the emperor that asking the third wish would spell doom for the rest of mankind. The sorcerer pulled out the fire opal he got earlier and uttered an incantation. This trapped the jinn inside the fire opal and foiled his plan eventually. In present-day America, an antique collector excitedly watches the arrival of a valuable Ahira Mazda statue from a ship. A crane operator lowers the crate that contains the statue. But he makes a mistake, and the crate falls suddenly. It squashes the collector's assistant, and causes the statue inside to break into pieces. A dock worker hurries to the scene of the accident, and finds the same fire opal, which was used by the sorcerer to trap the gin lying in the rubble. He carefully pockets the fire opal, and takes it to a pawn shop. The shop owner then takes the jewel to an auction house for an appraisal. The auction organizer is bowled over by the bauble, and tells the pawn shop owner that he will assign his best appraiser to evaluate the opal. At the moment, the auction organizer's best appraiser, Alex, is at a tennis court with her best friend Josh. After their game, they talk about Alex's recently ended relationship. Josh then makes a move on her, and asks her out on a date. Alex rebuffs his advances, saying that they have a good friendship, and they shouldn't ruin that and turn it into a hormone ship. But Josh is insistent that they'll make a good couple, and he urges her to think about it first. Afterward, Alex goes to the office, and sees the opal for the first time. She remarks about how rare and magnificent it is, and she carefully evaluates the jewel. She then blows on the opal, unknowingly waking the jinn trapped inside. Alex puts the opal under the microscope, and when she looks at the lens, she sees the jinn's red eyes. Mystified, she tells the auction organizer that she needs to run more tests on the jewel before she can appraise it. She takes the fire opal to Josh, who works at a lab. Alex shares her suspicions that there's something odd inside the jewel. And as a favor to her, Josh will study the fire opal closely. She then leaves the jewel with Josh, and heads to the local school, where she teaches basketball to girls in her free time. Back in the lab, Josh conducts thermal imaging analysis on the fire opal. The results show that there is a significant heat signature inside the jewel. The fire opal heats up, and refracts the laser beams, intensifying until the jewel breaks into pieces, and the gin is released. Right then, the whole lab explodes, and Josh hurdles backward. The monstrous Jin slowly crawls to a wounded Josh. He can barely speak due to the pain that he is feeling, but the Jin tells him that he can easily remove his pain. Josh says yes, and the Jin grants his wish by killing him. With the first wish mission done, the Jin then gains its full strength and stands up. Meanwhile, Alex starts to hear the Jin's voice in her head. She gets worried and tries to call Josh's office, but to no avail. Lexi's uncanny feeling pushes her to go to Josh's lab. She shrieks in horror when she sees the wreckage in his corpse. A lieutenant later comes to investigate Josh's death. He approaches Alex and calms her down. She tells him that she asked Josh to analyze a fire opal shortly before he died. Somewhere in the city, a homeless man loitering in front of a pharmacy is shooed away by a pharmacist. Grumbling, the homeless man walks away and wishes that the pharmacist would die. The jinn, now clothed in rags, emerges from the shadows and asks the homeless man if he would be willing to trade his soul for his wish to come true. 
Not really believing the jinn, the homeless man replies that maybe cancer would be sufficient enough for the pharmacist. True enough, boils appear all over the pharmacist's body, and he wastes away and dies a gruesome death. The homeless man watches all this happen, and runs away from the jinn in terror. Concurrently, on the other hand, Alex feels the pharmacist's pain, and she screams in horror. Later that night, she stays with her sister, who is deeply worried about her. She comforts Alex, and tells her that Josh's death is not her fault, just like her parents' deaths were not her fault. It turns out, in the past there was a fire at their house, and Alex was only able to save her sister. Ever since then, she felt guilty for not saving their parents, and she began to have nightmares and visions. The sister thinks that what Alex is experiencing now, is similar to the nightmares she had after the fire, but Alex insists that this time is different. The next morning, Alex tracks down the dock worker who found the jewel previously. He admits that he got the fire opal from the statue, bought by the antique collector. She also reads a newspaper article detailing the accident at the dock, which led to the discovery of the fire opal. It is indicated there that the crane operator lowering the crate was drunk that day, leading to the accident. In the following, Alex visits the collector for more information about the history of the statue. He shows her his room filled with statues of forgotten deities, and explains that the statue was of Ahura Mazda, the god of light in Zoroastrianism theology. The collector also gives Alex the contact details of a folklore professor who can help her. Lastly, he invites her and her sister to a dinner party he's hosting soon. Soon after, Alex goes to the folklore professor. She tells her all about the ancient legend of a court sorcerer, who trapped an evil spirit called a jinn inside the fire opal. The professor also adds that the jinn's goal has always been to take over this human world, and if they get the third wish, they can enslave humans. Meanwhile, the monstrous jinn goes to the morgue, cuts a dead man's face and wears it, making him look like a normal human. After getting a good-looking face, he then goes to the store to shop for a nice suit. A pretty attendant helps him choose a suit. He spots her desires and taunts her, by saying that her beauty will fade. The jinn pushes the attendant to admit that she wishes she will stay beautiful forever. So he grants her wish, by turning the attendant into a mannequin, thereby preserving her beauty as she wished. The jinn goes to the lieutenant next, and questions him about Joshi's case and Alex's whereabouts. At first, the lieutenant refuses, and he gets distracted by an annoying suspect in the police station. The lieutenant then says that he wishes they'll have irrefutable evidence to jail the suspect for his crimes. With no surprise, the jinn makes it happen, by manipulating the suspect to start a shootout in the police station. In the ensuing chaos, the jinn manages to get Alex's calling card from the case file. In her house, Alex does research on the jinn. She learns that the jinn can only use their powers by granting wishes, and that they gather the souls of humans, whose wishes they granted. The souls can power the opal until they find the human who released them, and grant the humans three wishes. Apparently, Alex is the one who released the jinn by accident. Later that night, the jinn goes to Alex's place of employment, and meets the auction organizer in his office. He asks him for Alex's address, but he says no. So the jinn shows him his power, by transforming a statuette into gold. After seeing the jinn's magic, the auction organizer gets tempted, and gives him Alex's address, in exchange for a million dollars. Right at that very moment, the auction organizer's mother names him as her insurance policy beneficiary, and she dies in a plane crash afterward. The jinn later breaks into an empty apartment, and holds the pieces of the fire opal in his hand. He begins claiming the souls of all the people, whose wishes he had granted. Their souls power the opal, and it glows intensely. Alex can feel their pain at the same time, and she rises in agony. When it ends, the jinn calls her, and says that he has now powered the gem, and he will soon come after her. In fear, Alex runs to the professor's apartment, and asks for her help. The woman lets her in, but unbeknownst to Alex, it is the same apartment the jinn broke into. Alex notices that the professor is acting strangely, so she starts to leave, but a deep and gravelly voice orders her to sit down. Alex turns and sees the jinn in his true form. She realizes that he killed the professor and wore her smelly face. He tells her that he needs her to make three wishes, since she is the person who released him from the opal, and her wishes would break the barrier between worlds, and release the rest of the jinn to the human world. As a treat, the jinn offers her a free wish. Alex wishes that he would kill himself. To her surprise, the jinn obliges her by shooting himself in the head. But this doesn't work, and he just heals quickly, because the jinn is immortal. Alex then makes her first official wish. She wants to know who the jinn truly is. So he takes her inside the opal, where she sees the trapped souls of the people whose wishes he granted. All of them, including the attendant, the auction organizer, and the homeless man, are being painfully tortured. Alex is shocked by the evil she sees inside the opal. She tries to run away, but just gets lost inside a maze. 
The Jin appears, and cackles at her human fragility. He threatens that he will harm her sister. In response, Alex makes her second wish. She wants to be back at her apartment without him. The Jin obeys, and transports her back to her apartment alone. She immediately looks for her sister there, but instead finds a note from the sister, saying that she will go to the collector's dinner party. Alex hurriedly drives to the collector's address, and the Jin follows her, once again donning a man's face. She tells the doorman that the Jin is trying to kill her, and the doorman blocks the Jin from coming in, while Alex slips through the door. However, the Jin tempts the doorman into wishing that he could escape from his boring life, and the Jin teleports him into a torture cell, filled with horror movies from Daniel CC Movie Channel. The Jin then makes his way inside, and befriends the collector, who wishes that his party would be unforgettable. Of course, the Jin grants his wish, and curses all the guests, causing unforgettable chaos and death. He also reveals his true form, and terrorizes the people there for fun. Even the collector vomits a hideous, slug-like creature, that goes after Alex immediately. But she escapes it, using a broken piece of pottery to cut its smelly body. Meanwhile, armed security guards come to Alex's rescue. But the terracotta soldiers from the collector's collection come to life suddenly and kill them all. Unfortunately, the Jin corners Alex inside one of the galleries and shows her that he had trapped her sister in one of the collector's paintings. He threatens to burn the painting with her sister inside, and she will die a painful death just like their parents. With no choice left, Alex makes her third wish, to the delight of the Jin. She wishes that the dock worker wasn't drunk on the job, while hoisting the crate down from the ship. After that, the Jin thinks that since Alex had given her third wish, he would be able to release his fellow Jin into the world. But that doesn't happen to his own wish. Instead, he is sucked back into the opal. It turns out, Alex's third wish reverses everything that happened, since the dock worker's drunkenness caused him to drop the crate, leading to the discovery of the opal and later the release of the Jin. So if he wasn't drunk that day, the statue is safely delivered to the collector, and no one dies. The world goes back to normal, and only Alex remembers everything that happened. Josh is now alive, and she finally realizes that she has some hormone feelings for him. So she asks him out to dinner, and kisses him, surprising the shitty Josh greatly. He asks her if she's alright, and Alex just winks and leaves. The movie ends with the Ahura Mazda statue now being stored inside the collector's room of forgotten deities. Jin, the Wishmaster, sits alone inside the opal, wishing in despair and waiting patiently for the day that he'll be released again. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.